The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Hi, I'm John Shane Height with Spirit and Truth Fellowship, and today I'm going to talk about why Jesus moved from Nazareth to the town of Capernaum. Now, why he left Nazareth is pretty clear in the scripture. Let's get some background. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, and what he was teaching the people didn't like. And it said, and all the people in the synagogue were filled with anger as they heard these things, and they got, him and, they got up and threw him out of the city, led him to the brow of the hill that their city was built on in order to throw him down the cliff. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And he came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee. And then in John chapter 2, verse 12, we read, After this, he went down to Capernaum. Yeah, after he gets thrown out of Nazareth. <laughs> he goes down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brothers and his disciples. So Jesus, is, Jesus moves to Capernaum. And the question we want to ask ourselves is, why? Because if you know about the Galilee where Jesus was, had grown up in Nazareth, if you know about the Galilee in the time of Christ, there were dozens of cities, dozens of things, cities he could have chosen from to move to. So why did he choose Capernaum? And this is one of the reasons why you and I need to learn a little more about the Bible because there's these really nifty lessons that are buried in the text of Scripture that require a little bit of ferreting out. And it's a good lesson to learn why Jesus would move to Capernaum when he had so many other cities to choose from. Um, and we're going to get this, we're going to get this lesson from both the Bible itself and from the culture and from history and from archaeology. And one of the things that we need to learn as we study the Bible is things that were commonly known, just commonly understood. What people ate, how people dressed, um, just how they lived their lives. Those things aren't in the Bible. And they're not in the Bible because they were commonly known. Everybody knew them. And so the same thing with Capernaum. Everybody knew about Capernaum. And it made perfect sense to everybody why Jesus would move there. But, you know, 2,000 years later, all of a sudden, it's not so clear why Jesus would move there, and we need to ferret it out. Now, some of these things we're going to be able to ferret out from reading the Bible itself, and then some of these things we're going to have to use some history, some archaeology, and reconstruct some things. So let's go to the Bible itself first. Now let's see what's going on here. Um, one thing we read about in Capernaum is a centurion. Now, a centurion was a Roman soldier who was over a hundred other soldiers. Now, <laughs> the, the Romans didn't stick their soldiers in every little hamlet. You know, they would pick places of influence. So the fact that there was a centurion there tells you that he was a person of influence and or that it was a city. Capernaum was a city of influence. And we know that the, the centurion with his troops was living there because in Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5, it says, Now when he, Jesus, had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him and treating him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, grievously tormented. And Jesus says to him in verse 7, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but say the word and my servant will be healed. And by the way, that is one of the great miracles in the New Testament is that Jesus just spoke the word and from afar that that servant was healed. But the point is for the centurion to say, hey, I've got a roof here, means the centurion was living there. And that meant all the other soldiers were living there. And so now all of a sudden we're, we're, we're kind of like, okay, mental checkpoint. Jesus goes to Capernaum. It's an important enough city that the Romans have a centurion with troops stationed there. Well, what else do we find? Well, then we're reading about Matthew, the tax collector, in Mark chapter 2, verse 14 says, And as he, Jesus, passed by, passed by the area, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, and that's another name for the disciple Matthew, later the apostle Matthew, sitting at the tax office, 
wait a minute, <laughs> there's a tax office in Capernaum? Why would there be a tax office in Capernaum? And all of a sudden we're beginning to see a picture here. Wow, Capernaum is a really important city. It's, it's got a tax office and you know what? I'll bet the centurion and his troops are there to protect the Roman money because there's a lot of money coming into Capernaum and the Romans don't want that taken. So they're going to guard that money by a centurion and some troops. Why is there so much money going through, through Capernaum? What's, what's going on? And to understand that, we need to go to the maps and see what was happening in the ancient world. So let's take a look at an ancient map of Israel. Well, now what we're looking at is a map of Israel. And here's the Jordan River coming down to feed the Sea of Galilee, and then the Jordan River leaving the Sea of Galilee on its way to the Dead Sea. And this is a map of some of the major ancient roads. And here is a road coming up uh, out of Egypt. And this in the old times was called the, the Way of the Philistines. And later on it was called the Via Maris or the Way of the Sea or as it's in the Old Testament, the Road of the Sea. And uh, Jesus Christ was prophesied to minister by this road. And so here's this major Roman road comes up from Egypt. And this was, by the way, the major road that went from Egypt to Damascus and then to points east and points north. So the road is coming up, then goes through the Megiddo Pass and over. And here it actually forked. There was a, a branch that went along the east side of the Sea of Galilee and then this branch here that went along the west side of the Sea of Galilee and came right through Capernaum and then broke up and over and headed off to Damascus. Eventually there was also uh, a road with a bridge over the Jordan River that then broke toward Damascus that way. And very close to the area of Capernaum that we've actually found a Roman mile marker. You know, the Romans were very much a society of uh, order and they like to put mile markers on their roads. So here's a picture of a mile marker that was found very close to Capernaum. But the fact that Capernaum was on the main road that went from Egypt all the way to Damascus is one of the reasons that Christ would move there because there was a lot of international traffic there. And besides that, Capernaum was a border town. So let's look at another map that shows Capernaum as a border town. So here's another map. We've got our Mediterranean Sea over here in the west. And of course the body of Israel in the Sea of Galilee. Here's the Jordan River coming down feeding the Sea of Galilee and then leaving the Sea of Galilee. And this area here at the time of Jesus Christ was the Tetrarchy of Herod Antipas. And if you notice, this dotted line here follows Herod's boundary. And it's going to come down here to the south, follow the Sea of Galilee, and then here at the north, it comes about just two, two and a half, maybe three miles east of Capernaum. And Capernaum is this town right here. And so it's the first major town, and it was on the Via Maris. And here's Herod's boundary. So what do we know about Capernaum? Well, we know it's a road on a major trade route. And now it's really close to the border. So when people cross the border, what do they have to pay? They have to pay their taxes. They have to pay their tariffs and their duties. So there's going to be a tax collector's office there. Well, then you've got all that money. So now you've got to put a centurion there. Plus, you have the international traffic coming up through the main part of the Tetrarchy and off to Damascus and parts north. So why would Jesus pick this Capernaum to live? What a great place to reach people. And that's what Jesus' ministry was all about. Let's look at one more map and see another reason why Jesus would have moved to Capernaum. This we're looking at is a map of the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee here, shaped like a harp. And we're looking at the northern part, and there are a number of harbors all around the sea. You don't get to see the whole sea in this picture, but there were a number of harbors all the way around the sea. And notice how large the harbor, and this comes out of archaeology, by the way, marine archaeology, going down and finding the ancient harbors. Um, and notice how large 
the ancient harbor of Capernaum was, and it was the largest harbor on the Sea of Galilee at the time of Christ. So that tells you that, you know, we, not only was there international traffic going through Capernaum, not only was, was there contact with the Jews and then the Gentiles like the, like the uh, centurion, but also in the area of Galilee itself, it had a large population of locals who were using the area. So Jesus Christ, by moving to Capernaum, had wonderful exposure for his ministry to teach the truth of God's word, to showcase God, if you will, by his miracles and by what he did. So now all these pieces come together, the centurion, the, the existence of the tax office in Matthew, the Via Maris, the border town that Capernaum is, the ancient harbor that was there and how large it is. And now we are in a position to answer the question, why did Jesus move to Capernaum? Well, it was a major town with international traffic. It was a wonderful place to reach many and many different people. So now that we've seen this large harbor, we're, we're in a much better position with all this background to understand why Jesus would move to Capernaum. We saw the centurion there. We saw the tax office there. It's a border town. It's got a huge harbor. Uh, there's, there's so many reasons, both from an international and a national level that Jesus Christ would move to Capernaum to showcase God. You know, he's the son of God. He's going to do miracles. He's going to show everyone that, that he is the, the word in the flesh, that he is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he needs a place to showcase that. And what a better place than Capernaum. And so he moves from Nazareth to Capernaum, something that was made really easy <laughs> when they threw him out of Nazareth. But then we can, we can kind of step back and we can ask ourselves, what lesson can we learn from this? And one of them certainly is, where am I living? Am, am I now, am I in the place that God wants me to be? And am I doing what God wants me to do? Or like Jesus, should I think about being in a different place or doing something else so that I can best bless God, bless God's people, and fulfill the will of God? 